What if I told you you could expertly deploy Splunk even if you're not a Splunk expert? You can. Almost anyone can with the secret I'm about to give you. Splunk can be a complex beast with its various components, requirements, and best practices on top of the operating system selection, storage layout, and network design. Deploying it can feel like an impossible task. Lucky for us, Splunk has created validated architectures that are effective, simple, and future-proof. To truly appreciate what the Splunk validated architectures are, you need to first take a few steps back and look at how Splunk was deployed prior to 2017 when the validated architecture white paper was released. Before 2017, as an architect, you were left with two choices. Either you hired a consultancy to come in and train you while designing your Splunk infrastructure, or you spent days and weeks building up the required level of knowledge to understand Splunk well enough to deploy it. The stakes were high. On one hand, you might spend tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars with a consultancy and end up with an architecture you barely understand. On the other hand, you might build it yourself and wind up rebuilding it at a much greater expense down the road when it fails to scale or you run into performance issues. Fast forward to 2017, when the Splunk validated architectures, also called SVAs for short, were made public at the Splunk.com 2017 in Washington, DC. The validated architectures gave everyone the hard-earned knowledge and wisdom to build a world-class Splunk architecture that suited their need. The SVAs provided a few notable benefits. First, they allowed customers to standardize their architecture to one that is known and understood by Splunk support. Because the SVAs have Splunk best practices baked in, this streamlined troubleshooting sessions and future architecture decisions. Second, this reduced the total cost of ownership for Splunk deployments. Because the architectures were too for just enough power, but not too much, you no longer had to worry that you had over-provisioned your hardware stack and blown a whole bunch of money. Third, and maybe the most important, it allowed you, the Splunk customer, to begin your Splunk journey heading down the right path. You could focus on data onboarding, user training, and content creation, the things that you're supposed to do in Splunk, instead of constantly worrying about your design decision. The Splunk SVAs lay out seven architectures, although three of which are the really popular ones. Those three will be what we focus on here. The other four are great, but the majority of people watching this video won't need help figuring those out. They'll be paying a consultant. The first SVA is called the single server deployment. All Splunk components from indexing and licensing to searching are installed on a single server. This is a great way to get started in Splunk if the reasons you use Splunk are not mission critical. Because this is a single server architecture, there is no redundancy. This means when it comes time to patch Splunk or the operating system, Splunk will be offline during that period. No logs will be collected, no searches will be run, no alerts are going to be fired. This single server SVA is also limited in its capacity to ingest data. Splunk says it can handle about 300 gigs a day, but that honestly sounds like a made up number. I would put the number closer to 150 gigs a day, just to be safe. It is however, a really simple deployment with very low overhead. The second SVA is the single site distributed clustered deployment. In this model, the major Splunk components are separated from each other. This establishes the three-tier approach with a separate management plane. The first tier is the collection tier. This includes universal forwarders, heavy forwarders, and all other data sources. The next tier is dedicated to data ingest and parsing, and it's called the indexing tier. In this tier, there are two or more index servers that are centrally managed by an indexer cluster master. The indexer cluster master maintains unified configurations across all of the indexers, allowing administrators a simple path towards scaling index as the need arises. It's important to remember the indexer cluster master is a standalone Splunk component that will be installed on a separate server, possibly along with other management components like a license master, management console, and deployment server. This SVA has a single search head, which means that while there is redundancy at the data ingest tier provided by the indexer cluster, there is no redundancy for the search head activities like content creation, reporting, and alert generation. This is a very popular architecture though that many organizations choose because of the redundancy at the data ingest tier. Although, there isn't redundancy in search, search head failures are very rare and can be easily solved with a reboot. The next SVA is the multi-site distributed cluster deployment that utilizes a search head cluster. This architecture takes redundancy to the next level by effectively cloning the single site distributed deployment we just talked about. Not only is each site redundant and able to process data independent of the other site's clusters, but there's also a complete set of data replicated between Splunk clusters. That coupled with the search head cluster per site provides a measure of redundancy not found in any other SVA. 
This does, however, increase the complexity of the deployment, increase the total cost of ownership through infrastructure cost, and can make troubleshooting more difficult because of that additional complexity. If, however, your organization operates in multiple clouds or several on-premises data centers, and you have the requirement to deliver Splunk as though it's a mission-critical app, this SVA is hard to pass up on. Now, the next step is really important. I already mentioned this, but I'll say it again because it's so vital. Nearly half of the white paper is dedicated to showcasing the nuances of the clustered search head and indexer configurations. If those topics make question marks pop up over your head, be sure to check out this video as an intro to Splunk.